Hello gamers, it's me, uh, Life Spiller 79 and this is my show. I wanted to do a podcast because sometimes I, you know, I get busy with doing videos and or just my daily life uh, with work and family and going to events and but um, in the midst of everything, I love collecting. So I still like to go out to the retro shops, you know, like the um, mom and pop stores, half price bookstores and all that kind of little stuff um, <laughs> and doing my normal pickups, just scouring and seeing what kind of stuff I can nab up as far as stuff that's worthy of going into the collection, because I'm trying to move into more of an area of picking up the really good stuff versus just picking up stuff. You know, some stuff I, I like because it's it's cheap and I like I like to get things on clearance. It's always kind of been my thing. Um, I like to just be able to get that bargain to get that deal or or even getting a getting a nice little deal like I did with my Nintendo 64. You know, that just excites me. But um, I just wanted to talk about a few things today with the year beginning. You know, we're uh, looking into a new year. And I just wanted to talk about some of the games that I'm anticipating and why. And, you know, you can feel free to leave comments down below and just tell me what games you're anticipating this year or games that may be uh, um, may ignite you as far as wanting to purchase the next console because I'm still I'm still going to stick with, you know, the last gen and even my retro stuff. I may eventually move on to a PS4 because I am a collector and I do love video games, but I cherish the retro stuff just a little bit more just because, you know, not only because of the value, but because of the sentimental value, the nostalgia, a lot of the things that just spark a lot of old memories for me that take me back to a familiar place. But yeah, um, I only have three games. I don't have no top five or top 10 because I really was looking for games that definitely sparked that anticipation in me. And if it didn't really spark that anticipation, not saying that there's games out there that, that I'm not looking forward to, to playing, but these games actually, when I go back over last year, and they got me fueled up and the idea of them coming out this year is what got me going. The first game that I wanted to talk about was Strider. I um I love Strider. Um the it's it's a download, it looks like it's a downloadable game. Um I didn't even look down at the bottom. I know that it's coming on all consoles, even the last gen, the 360 and PS3. So if it is a downloadable, which I'm pretty sure it is because it looks like one. Um, I'm anticipating this really because I love Strider. Um, I actually saw it uh, yesterday for the NES and I may go ahead and pick that up because I never played it on the NES. I played it on the Sega Genesis and I, if I can recall, I think it was at the arcades at one point too. I believe that's how I actually got interested in it in the first place was because it was at the, at the uh, arcades you know, as a, as a little kid or as a teen at that time. But then I got it, you know, um, I later on when I started picking up consoles here and there, I got it for the Sega Genesis uh, a while back. It was probably about probably almost 10 years ago or my wife, um, well, my wife, yeah, my wife's cousin, he was moving to Chicago and he had a Sega Genesis and he was just letting me know, Hey, um, I'm getting ready to move all of my stuff out of my apartment and I still have a Sega Genesis in there and I know you love games and stuff like that. And this was before I really started collecting like hardcore collecting like I've been doing over the last two years. And um, he was like, if you want it, you can go ahead and get it. So I got it. Um, I, I got the Sega Genesis. Um, he had a few games with it. Um, I think he had Sonic 2 and Sonic 1 or something like that. And he probably had a few other games. I can't recall. But I remember getting Strider online and I paid two dollars for it. Um, it was just a loose, loose cart, uh, loose cartridge. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't in box or anything like that with the book. But I loved it, man. I was like, oh, man, this is so cool because it just took me back to when I had it, when I uh, when I played it at my friend's house and stuff like that. And so I just had a nostalgic memory. So anytime I hear the name Strider 
And I, I heard about it last year about them doing the updated version of it, you know, and and I love how they they take the old and they revamp it, put the high def graphics on it and stuff like that and and just jazz it up. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I like the simplicity of it. I like that they kept it, you know, they kept it to pretty much to its core roots. And, you know, and I and that I think that's what really uh, has pumped me up about it. And that's why I'm looking forward to that. It's not necessarily my number one. And I'm not going to do these in order. It's just the games that I'm anticipating and looking forward to. Um, that's why I want to get Strider. Uh, so I can't wait till it comes out. Um, I'll definitely uh, be downloading it if it's if it's a downloadable game to my PS3 um, or 360, whichever. You know, and then the uh, next game, it takes me back to what is this? 2014? Uh, I think it was 2012. I think it was 2012, the first time we saw it at the um, E3, and that was Watch Dogs. Um, it what it did for me was it revolutionized my thinking. It opened my, it broadened my view or perspective on video games, and it just made me think about how far we've come. You know, every time we touch on a new plateau in video games, it just make you question where can we take it next? What can we do next with video games? And the fact that the dude had a cell phone, he's able to control pretty much everything, which at this point we're able to do a multitude of things on our cell phones. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So that captivated me right from the jump. I wanted to watch all the trailers. I wanted to watch all the content. I even sat there and watched the, uh, the first team. I think it was like 15 minute gameplay of it. Um, the unfortunate thing that the game got uh, delayed and it looks like they're getting pushed back to June, if I'm not mistaken, of this year. So I can't wait for that to come out. What I like about Watch Dogs is the scenery. I love I love the north. You know, it looks like it's in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm just looking at all the bridges and the trains and overhead passages and stuff like that. And. Being able to see a crime or know a crime is about to happen before it actually transpires, having a certain time crunch. I like all that building up type of moments. And it's a single player game. I'm pretty sure they're going to do online with multiplayers and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, man, I, I like that game to being able because I'm a I'm a techie and I'm a I, I love technology. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just the overall concept it's a new ip i love new ips which means uh new ideas that that um developers have sat down and they've they've come up with the possibility or the hypothetical as to what possibly could happen if we had that kind of technology within our own grasp within our own means so yeah man watch dogs is definitely on my radar and i am in high hopes of that um it's going to be on my PS3. Uh, I'm definitely going to get that from a PS3 or my 360, either or. Um, but this next game, um, there's a little history with this one because it goes back to the original game, and that's Infamous Second Son. Infamous, for me, I, I bought it day one. Uh, it was no question. When I saw uh, Cole basically waking up, in the middle of nowhere and there was like an atomic bomb that looked like that exploded in the middle of nowhere and he was just right there in the center of it all and dude had these powers you know be, you know due to this cosmic event that occurred and now he had electrical abilities and he could do all kinds of things and they uh they took it to another level with infamous 2 and infamous 2 in my honest opinion was good but the original was better. I um, I don't know. I, I, there was some correlation that just wasn't drawn for me. It seemed like they tried to, and and I think they um they struggled with part two. You know, I know there's people that out there that love part two, but part two they they struggle with the original look of what he was going to look like, and they actually went back to the old way that he looked. And to me, that symbolizes there was a little bit of struggle 
a um, little bit of things that may have occurred during that time. Things may have not went exactly the way they wanted to. But infamous second son, the reason why it, it, it most likely is my most anticipated game. I probably will say this. I'll go ahead and say it is my number one because it's going to be a console invokement. Like if even if that's a word, it's going to invoke me to want or it's going to push me to want to buy the PS4 because it's piquing my interest because for one thing, it's a new leap and bound in technology It's it's the next console. So it's next gen. And, you know, with that, we have more to work with. You know, you're able to put a lot more in the processor and, you know, able to do a lot more things with graphics and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I was like, wow. This is something that could turn out to be pretty interesting. And I like it that it it centers itself around a new character with these new abilities and you're able to do new things, you know, and you just. Man, I <laughs> I can't get all my words together, but I'm definitely anticipating infamous second son. And if anything, I know it's going to come bundled knowing Sony and how, how they uh, market their products. With it being a first party game, with it being um, pretty much one of their franchise franchises, I guess you could say, you know, and I, I, that's one thing about um, Sony that I, I really do love. And that kind of brings me into my next discussion is the console wars. I think Sony. And it doesn't say that. And then I think this year Sony will have the overall lead in sales game wise software wise because they've got the the edge on microsoft sony will definitely i believe they're going to win this one i believe they're going to win the console war overall i mean and that's just and that may be me taking a leap and bound so early on to say that but i believe this year alone sony will have the edge uh, i think the deliverance of their software will speak for itself. I think that the product and how they're delivering it and, the you know, if you take apart the specs, there's some similarities, but then there's some differences that always outdo the others. I know we got our fanboys that say this and that, but it's about quality to me. And I believe the quality of the product that Sony always puts out, they usually put out really good products it's not taken away from what Microsoft does because their capability to produce a, a awesome product is always there. But I, I believe that Sony will have the edge and I believe Sony learned a lot from the last gen with the overpricing, with putting too much on their consumers, expecting so much out of them out of so little. They made it hard for the developers to make the program, make the video games back then with the cell processor chip, whereas now they're using a regular um, Intel processing chip and stuff like that. And, you know, it makes it easier for developers to break things down, code wise programmers, uh, code wise to be able to devise and be able to make a beautiful game easier. And so that opens up the door for third party companies to come in and want to work with us and market the product and get us out there a lot more. Not that I won't have both. I'll probably eventually will get the Xbox one down the road as well, because like I said, I am a collector and that's what I do. But yeah, um, those definitely are my three games that I'm anticipating for this year. Strider, which looks really awesome. Uh, Watch Dogs and, um, infamous second son and if you notice the correlation between the three is they're all one player or single player games which i like those games anyway because it's all about strategizing solving and then i love strider because it goes back to the platform i love Watch Dogs because you have an open world of in you know endless possibilities and then second son is more on that science fiction kind of um it was more fictional, I should say, fictional character type of thing. The possibilities, what we could do if we had powers, you know, and then um, I just wanted to talk about um, a few other things just to 
because I've, I've, I've received such an overwhelming response over the last few weeks from new viewers, new subscribers, comments. Um, probably over the last two weeks, I've probably gotten almost 50 new subscribers. And for my channel, that's a big thing. So I just want to let people know how I got started, kind of give you a backstory. Um, I originally was Game Freak Forever, and then I um, I was partnered with another site. And, you know, we we eventually went our separate ways, you know, and um, there was a departure. And then I, I also, you know, there was um, and I, I started my channel back in. And I always go back on this because I'm trying to remember. I know it's been. So I think it was April 28th, uh, 2002 or 2012. I actually started my channel, like my first official video. I had posted a video on there, but that was not my channel video. But my first video was Ben. Um, I actually started my video through a conversation with a good friend of mine. Um, and he used to have a channel and it's, it's still up, but it's not, you know, active, active. They haven't place videos on there in a long time. It was Super Bob Tendo. And we were just having a conversation and he was like, man, you just have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to video games. And you say, it sounds like you have something to offer. Well, at the time, I only had about 50 or 60 games. So I didn't really feel like I had anything to showcase or talk about or do. And almost 70 videos later, coming up on almost two years, I'm, I'm still doing it and I'm still loving it. I... I went through my dips here and there. And so, um, like I said, with the departure from the other site, um, plus it was easier to find my name when I changed it because there was a lot of game freaks out there because it was game freak forever. But I changed it to life spill of 79. And um, that's pretty much how I got started. I just picked up a camera one day and started doing these videos, started learning about editing and, um, you know, keying in with your audience and and um, good titles and good things to talk about discussions being on top of the edge of things and stuff like that and and so that's how I got my channel started but collecting for me became not only a hobby but it became a part of it, it just became another integral or another aspect of who I am and I always knew I was a gamer I knew I was a gamer even when I was younger um, I could draw the correlations or the I could separate the two between family members and myself. I was always associated as a, a, a person that loved play video games. But I think back then versus now, how the general public accepts it is different. There's a there's a bigger response. There's a more accepting response to being a gamer because there's casual gamers, there's hardcore gamers, and then there's some that's in between. They can go in, but don't go to the level of a hardcore gamer. So I think the overall, you know, overwhelming response to it now is so, so different because back then you were looked at as a nerd, a geek, a loner. But really, they didn't know that those individuals tend to be the most intelligent people that you come across, you know, because gamers, they have a way of processing, a way of thinking or a way of doing things. I read an article just recently where they were saying that gamers have the ability to fantasize, to think, to strategize. And they also do that in a dream world where you can control your own dreams. You can make things happen because of your imagination, because of being a gamer, you're able to step outside of your normal life and do other things. You know, you're able to be a gamer and imagine the endless possibilities of what can occur in your life. So that's how your dream. And I know my dreams are very vivid. Um, they're very imaginative. They're uh, a lot of weird things. Like I've had dreams about flying, like literally flying in the air and, you know, not having wings, just flying just, and it probably was based off of something I don't watch or play or whatever. I've had, dreams about weird looking type of animals and, and you know, all kinds of crazy sorted things. And, um, but just to, um, dip back, I believe I probably would have been a collector, a hardcore collector, even back then, but because of 
a lot of things that occurred in my home, we were poor, we didn't have much. And so, you know, a lot of my stuff got sold, you know, to uh, take care of other matters, you know, and that that was um, that was a letdown for me. So I always told my son that if, you know, it ever came down to it, he would never have to worry about those things. And I've I've pretty much stayed true to that word, you know, and that's that's who I am. And um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about, you know, uh, plans for the channel. I'm pretty much going to stick to a lot of the core things that got my channel going. And that's uh, my pickup videos, because I love doing those. I love to showcase new items, new things, new, you know, things that I bought at thrift stores or just random places or, you know, at your regular stores, you know, because I shop all the way around. And as a collector and as a gamer and as a, a person that's looking to buy some of the top items, you always keep your eyes open. And so my plans for the future is to stick to the pickup videos, um, do the reviews of video games, like maybe new video games that have come out, kind of put my stamp on it, my view on it, how I feel about it, um, video response to other uh, YouTubers, because there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of YouTube gamers out there, man. And the surface is yet to be cracked. I mean, there's so many of them out there. And and for my channel to do what it's doing right now, I am completely satisfied in its success. So, yeah. Uh, then also shout outs because there's channels out there that don't get enough love or they're starting to gain momentum. But some people don't even know about it. You know, some people may see it and they'll be like, well, I didn't even know that channel existed. I've seen it come across my news feed or whatever and never pushed play or clicked view or whatever or click play or whatever, whatever it is that you do. So, yeah, the shout out videos. Um, I'm now moving into podcasts. I'm going to start doing more podcasts because it's something I can do on a go because I'll be thinking about stuff that I can do. Um so let's see. Also, what other type of videos I've been doing? Oh, and then hypotheticals and stuff like that. You know, um, just like if you were ever stranded on an island, what kind of game would you bring or something like that? Or just talking about my oh yeah, and then my top five, top ten videos and stuff like that. I'm still going to do those as well. So there's a lot of content that I plan on bringing to this channel, which all those things that I've listed, I've done, but I'm just going to continue to do them. I'm also trying to be more consistent with my channel because I know that the viewers that have subscribed, uh, I've I've been somewhat consistent, but I know that I could have been more consistent than I've been. And now I'm trying to get to the point where I do at least two videos a week. So Somewhere between Tuesday and Friday or Monday and Friday, I try to drop at least two videos. So somewhere I'm not going to give a definite day, but I'm trying to keep it consistent to where I drop at least two videos a week. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So with that being said, those are the things that I'm looking forward to. Um, I hope you enjoyed this first podcast. I just wanted to give it a shot and I just wanted to. um tell you my thoughts because there's other little thoughts you know i guess you can just call it like my my blog or whatever i mean we call it a podcast but really it's just my random thoughts that i'm thinking about a couple of things that i've just been thinking about over the week but other than that i'm life spiller 79 this is my first podcast so tell me what you think tell me uh, what games you're anticipating um Tell me what what videos you loved or what type of videos you've loved that I've done in the past that you want to see more of, because I will definitely take that, write it down and put it down, you know, on my calendar for future reference. All right. I'm out.